right, new smoke swirling around Donald Trump's inaugural committee. The New York Times today detailing exactly who federal prosecutors think may have been involved in a crooked scheme to curry favor with the incoming Trump administration. The feds looking at, quote, whether foreigners illegally funneled donations to President Trump's inaugural committee and a pro-Trump super PAC, focusing on whether people from uh, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates use straw donors to disguise their donations. In a moment, I'm gonna to talk to the president of Obama, President Obama's inaugural committee uh, about this longstanding mystery. What in the world happened to the record-setting money Trump's inaugural team raised? Previous inaugurations raised millions as well, but nowhere near what the Trump campaign brought in. More than twice as much as President Obama raised just four years earlier. And now we may be starting to find out where all that Trump money went and came from. Joining me now is Steve Kerrigan. He was the president and CEO of uh, Obama's 2013 inaugural committee. And Seth Waxman, a formal, uh, former federal prosecutor. Excuse me, gentlemen, great to have both of you with us. I want to put up that graphic once again because take a look at this like stark difference in the money raised from past presidents. Uh, Steve, when you look at something like this, why would President Trump double, in your explanation, what previous administrations were able to raise? You've sat in that position of having to raise money, but this is really something yeah. unexplainable. It is. He actually, I, I was chief of staff in 2009. He raised uh, more than what we did in both of President Obama's inaugurations, which were the two largest in history, but we'll leave that for another another conversation. Uh, look, the, the opportunity to give to an inaugural um, is a unique one, and particularly for a candidate like Donald Trump, where uh, as you know, as has been reported, he set up a super PAC in the summer of 16 because, frankly, his campaign was waning in money. He wasn't raising a lot of money from traditional Republican donors. So when it came to inaugural spending, this was a chance for folks to come to him with an awful lot of money, millions of dollars, in fact, uh, and say, look, I'm here and I support you uh, in your presidency and in your inauguration. There was no need for $107 million. They had, you know, probably a third of the staff that we had, a quarter of the events that we had that both us had, we had, and uh, President Bush's previous inaugurals, and they raised twice as much money. Uh, th it only sends up a red flag about why is the need for that much money. The need for that much money is because people want to give that to curry favor and buy an opportunity. That's why I've been calling it the inaugural slush fund for uh, probably a year and a half, because this is, uh, mm. this is an opportunity for him to have used transparency, as past presidents have, to really show the American people uh, what his inaugural is all about, and he chose, as he does almost every single time, uh, to take the easy way out and, frankly, show us that he has no integrity and uh, refuses to be transparent with the American people. Steve, let me ask you really quickly a follow-up on this. Okay, so you've been in this position. You talked about red flags. A, did you guys ever, I mean, w walk us through the due diligence that you guys did when somebody wanted to come and give the Obama inaugural committee a big chunk of change. What, did, what kind of due diligence sure. is expected from you guys? And did you, in your position, ever turn, turn away money, say, like, Okay, we can't accept this for this event. Absolutely, yeah. Look, we we it's called vetting in the in the in the donor and, and politics business. We're investigate the person to determine whether or not they meet your own standards that you, as an inaugural committee, uh, set. Uh, and we had very strict standards. Even back in 09, uh, you couldn't buy an inaugural ticket um, if you did not meet some of our standards, mm -hmm. uh, a ticket to the inaugural ball, which you could do uh, through Ticketmaster. But we would get the list and be able to throw a quick vet in, and, uh, and frankly, we turned away an awful lot of money. That Look, this is um, an opportunity for a presidency right at the outset to set the, the, the pace and f the example of what their presidency is going to be about. President Obama, for both of his inaugurations, wanted it to be about serving the American people, giving right. people an opportunity to serve each other and work together. And, and that's why we, we set our restrictions on, on money. We set a very uh, a strong set of principles on who we would take money from, and, uh, and which went well above and beyond the legal uh, limits. And, yeah. uh, and yes, we returned a, a lot of money. And I think it's probably for the folks of this current investigation. Uh, Seth, let me ask your thoughts on this. Is this just simply mismanagement of funds, or do you think something else is going on here when you look at the spike in the numbers from previous administrations? 
Well, whether I do or not, clearly the Southern District of New York, the prosecutor is looking into this too, so it does raise those issues. And what you have are two questions, the money coming into the committee and then the money going out. So the money coming in, foreigners, non-Americans, are not, not allowed to donate to these types of committees. So if you have foreigners that are donating funds through Americans, in other words, straw donors, to conceal the nature and, and, and source of those funds, that can be a campaign finance violation. And of course, if those funds are being donate to curry favor with the president or then candidate or president elect and he knew that and was promising favors in return you have the makings of a potential bribery case and then on the other end the money coming out of the inauguration committee if those funds you know we see a hundred plus million dollars if any of those funds were being used for non inauguration purposes if anyone was using them for you know to or to take fancy trips or anything non-inauguration related, then you can have a wire fraud case because, of course, the donors that were giving that money were giving it under the auspices that they would be used for the inauguration. So, so, the so how, do, how, do federal, how do federal investigators figure this out, Seth? How do they go about piecing this together? Well, like every other federal prosecution, you look at the bank records, you look at emails and texts, and then you start talking to people. And if you get someone that's clearly engaged in criminal conduct, you try to flip them, and then they tell you what the purpose and how the, uh, the transactions were structured. So much like we've heard through much of the Mueller investigation, there are building blocks. You start low, you work your way up, and you try to figure out if there was criminal wrongdoing. Yeah, and there's even some reporting, uh, according to ProPublica, that emails exchanged with Ivanka Trump uh, suggest that there was some concern if, in fact, uh, this was at some point audited. Steve Kerrigan, Seth Waxman, thank you guys both very much. Nancy thank Pelosi. You.